Last week, DeepSea dropped a bombshell its R1 model not only outperformed O1 but also fixed its biggest AI flaws, all without billions of dollars of VC funding or hiding behind paywalls. By keeping it open source, R1 proves that solving AI problems doesn't have to cost the GDP of a small country. And if you thought O1 was flawless, think again. The new model not only exposed its weaknesses but also resolved them all. But the question remains, how did R1 achieve this and what weaknesses are we talking about? Recently, DeepSeek has earned the title of the Robin Hood of AI, stealing the spotlight with its open source releases, while the once open open AI has become more closed than a billionaire's private island. Well, R1 introduces a unique RL training framework alongside cost efficiency, making it accessible to a much wider audience. Sure, O1 has built a reputation for delivering superhuman outputs across domains, but R1 is here flexing its reasoning muscles, delivering what is undoubtedly the most expensive slap in OpenAI's history. And in today's video, we'll dive deep into the three biggest flaws of O1 that R1 solved and why O1 actually sucks. Well, there goes my $200 O1 subscription straight down the drain, thanks to R1. Scoring 79.8% on the Amy math test, it edged out O1 at 79.2%. Its performance on Math 500 was even more remarkable, scoring 97.3% and on Code Forces it casually crushed 96.3% of human programmers. Not only is it better than O1, but also far more efficient which brings us to the first big flaw, the half-baked RL training framework. Unlike O1, which often mixes supervised fine-tuning and reinforcement learning, R1 decided to go the smart route, sticking to pure reinforcement learning in its zero phase. This means it is trained entirely through RL-based trial and error process, which enabled the model to develop sophisticated reasoning behaviors such as self-reflection and an extensive chain of thought. Though it wasn't perfect as it had readability issues in mixed languages at times, instead of letting that slow it down, they introduced a small amount of high-quality data as a cold start. This phase was like teaching a toddler how to stack blocks, lots of trial and error, with some very questionable results. It involved fine-tuning the model on thousands of long chain of thought examples. Once R1 mastered the basics, it stepped into the rejection sampling and SFT phase where things got real interesting. It started grabbing data from creative activities like writing and role-playing. Basically, it went from being a bookworm to attending a theater class and composing its own scripts. This shift towards more creative data sources also raises important questions about how we understand the model's reasoning process, and it is the biggest flaw of O1 which will be explained later in the third flaw. While it seems stuck in its labeled data comfort zone, R1 shows that complex reasoning doesn't need endless labels to thrive. Moreover, R1's reasoning is complemented by cost efficiency and accessibility, which brings us to the second flaw, performance per dollar. Though O1 is powerful, it is the perfect tool if your goal is to bankrupt yourself in record time. With pricing that doesn't require selling a kidney, DeepSeek's R1 ensures even the budget-conscious developer can afford cutting-edge AI. For just 55 cents per million input tokens and $2.19 per million output tokens, it's practically a steal, compared to OpenAI's O1, which charges $15 and $60 like it's fine dining for every query. With comparable or superior performance at a fraction of the cost, it raises the question whether O1 is overcharging for the privilege of its name. R1's staggering 671 billion parameters are proof that bigger is always better, at least until you try running it and your hardware bursts into flames. But don't worry, DeepSeek knows you don't have a supercomputer lying around, so they've graciously handed down distilled versions ranging from 1.5 billion to 70 billion parameters. So whether you're running R1 on a state-of-the-art server or your grandmother's 2009 laptop, DeepSeek ensures that the only thing harder than solving problems with AI is choosing which version won't make your hardware cry. Now, the third and most critical flaw of OpenAI's O1, a flaw that has held back true trust in AI, is finally addressed, which is the black box problem. O1 may produce outputs that are impressively advanced, but it also keeps you in the dark, like a magician pulling rabbits out of a hat while refusing to explain how. Users are left with nothing but the result, which is all fine and dandy until you need to understand why something went wrong. Enters R1, which actually documents its thought process, allowing users to see the reasoning behind the result step by step. Well, R1's transparency doesn't just make it smarter, it makes it trustworthy. Because when it comes to AI, it is important to know how conclusions were reached, rather than just praying the result makes sense. This ability to pinpoint errors is a game changer and R1 offers that luxury, turning debugging into a solvable puzzle rather than an existential crisis. Now, being a Chinese model, it is subject to oversight by China's internet regulator, which ensures its responses align with core socialist values. As a result, R1 avoids topics like Tiananmen Square or Taiwan's autonomy. With the MIT license release, DeepSeek has given the world a puzzle, a groundbreaking model wrapped in ideological constraints. And as a result, OpenAI is launching its Free O3 mini model in response, amid speculation that the global AI market could potentially collapse. Regardless, one thing is for sure, the global AI race just got a lot messier. I am a poor guy. If you like this video, please donate with the link in the description.